finally playing Apollo Justice for the 3DS. Totally different thing than like the other two Apollo Justice, three Apollo Justice trials that we have tried and uh, kept changing to do. Uh, obviously this time around we will be doing the 3DS. I am hoping to get the first two cases done, or I'm hoping to get case one done and to get started on case two, something I never accomplished with the other playthroughs, and hopefully those all go up at the same time. That's the goal right now, is to get all of this up at the same time. Other than that, we are testing everything, so do tell me if something's off. I do not hear any of the audio that uh, is recorded, so obviously I don't know what's going on. And as, as always, you can support me on Patreon. All Patreon money goes towards improving equipment. That helps the channel become better looking, is the best example, and helps the channel continue growing. Thank you all so much for your support on the main channel, no matter what. And... Let's get started! I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead? Someone hit him hard. Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? April 20th, 9.37 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 3. Panicked! Palm is winning. I can't admit it. I'm nervous. Oh, good morning. G good morning, sir! Oh, Apollo, you poor boy. You look tense, Justice. Wound up tight? Wound up, sir? No, I'm loose. I'm fine! That screeching noise is that your voice. I suppose it's to be expected. Your first trial, and it's a homicide. I guess justice doesn't start small, eh? Ha ha! Ha ha! Ha ha! You evil, evil man! Oh, I'm fine! I got up at 5 a.m. to do my cords of steel voice workout. I'm fine! I think. Ah, that explains it. Explains so much, doesn't it? I did detect a certain rasping quality to your speech. Screech. Screech, not speech. Although both would technically qualify. I don't know. Why am I rambling to myself? <coughs> I overdid it again. As you know, your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down. If you get my drift. I get your drift, 190%, buddy. Drift gotten, sir. I'm all over that drift. As it happens, I dined with him on the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Bum, bum, bum. Yes, yes, I'm fine, sir. One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. Uh, yeah, I, I might want to do that. God darn it, isn't that something you should do? My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, 
I'm a new attorney. And today is my first trial. Not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of murder. My boss wants me to help him out, of course. And, and so do I! I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him! No way! Uh, dot dot dot. Whoa! Dot dot dot. Good uh, morning? Dot dot dot. Morning. It's all up to you today. First trial. Nervous. Meeting him. Cardiac arrest. Oh my god. Dot dot dot. Dot dot dot. I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help. So, you're... Fine. I'm fine. Oh, Apollo. You poor boy. Ah, Mr. Fine, is it? Nope, nope, that's not my name. That is not my name. Oh. I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Da da da! Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney. And he's your friend, so why? Da da da, you'll see. Oh, I'll see, all right. Uh, you can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean... I mean, I... I mean, I... I mean, uh... It's time. Shall we? Y yes sir Okay, I need to focus. First trial. Here comes justice! I don't think that should be your, uh idea of a entrance april 20th 10 a.m district court courtroom number two <laughs> the court is the court is now in session the prosecution is ready your honor uh the defense is up fine i mean ready your honor mind going blank don't panic! Ugh, too late! No, oh, too late! Your name was Mr. Justice? And this is your first trial? Yes, Your Honor, but I'm fine, really! Are you quite sure? Your voice found, sounds a bit strange. <clears throat> Mr. Gavin? Yes, Your Honor. I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. However, however, a defense attorney must always see to his client's wishes, and my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course he wants justice, but to entrust his case to this greenhorn. Why? I do not exaggerate when I say that you're the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience. Fine, but does he have cords of steel? No! Then, let's begin. The defendant may enter the courtroom. Da da dot! Da da dot! This is truly an unfortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright, piano player. Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne. To think, I saw you enter this room a fresh attorney, and now I'll see you leave it in chains. I think Payne is like the only person I can constantly get the right voice, because I know what voice I made for him, because I tried to match his objection, and his objection is stupid. Ah, Winston Payne. Subtle as all ever I see. <laughs> the 
crime occurred at the Porsche Bowl Club, a Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Ray, took the victim, a customer, and he hit him, wham, on the head, smack, killed him cold. Hmm, the customer at the restaurant, you say. And the defendant, you say he was? The pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright, a pianist? This is the weapon that took the victim's life. A bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is appropriately our defendant's drink of choice. The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Deadly bottle added to the court record. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Make a practice of checking it frequently. The court record. Right! I've heard of that! I, I've heard of that vaguely in my mind! Use the court record button to look at the evidence so far. I'm confident in your ability to handle this. Right! Court but record button. Sounds like it's time for some hands-on action! So, the victim was a customer at this restaurant. The court record, there you guys see it, the court record works, and look it, you got profiles too. So let's go back. But just who was this, sir? Shady Smith. Shady Smith. Ah! Oh, hello. We believe he was a traveler, your honor. A traveler? According to his passport, he had been out of the country for a number of years. He had only returned to this country recently through his place of residence is unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant? That too is unclear at the present, your honor. We believe they first met at the Borsch Bowl Club on the night of the crime! Uh, just that, that seems shocking and uh, not really something that puts your case in a good light, buddy. If they had only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano playing. That doesn't appear to have been the case. No. The motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skills. At least not piano playing. I'll let the photo explain what I mean. <laughs> As we can see, a game of poker was in process. Progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Isn't poker gambling? That's a crime in and of itself! Indeed. It appears our defendant has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal! Ha ha ha! Objection! It is true that the defendant was engaged in giving poker with the victim. Yet it was only that, a game in the pure sense, a competition, Your Honor. A competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, the backs wreathed in blue flames, know its final outcome. Da da da, to come again. The cards on the table had blue backs, Your Honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mystify those present. And impress women. That would be our first order of business here, then. To find out more about this fatal game of cards. Da 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 hot. Very well, defendant. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it! My first trial! Here goes nothing! I feel like I've just messed up a college voice because I probably was wrong. Witness testimony, the competition. I am a pianist by trade, yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on the interested customers over at the poker table. The room where we play in the competition in there are the club's main attractions. The rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. Hmm. A pianist who can't play piano? Better than a defense attorney who can't defend! Ha ha ha! You lost to me three times, bucko! Two times. Two times. Okay, yeah, two. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, Your Honor. 
My first cross-examination. Don't blow it! Are you alright? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? It's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You've watched me perform cross-examinations many times. Though you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? No thanks! Nuh uh What do I do? Should I ask Mr. Kevin for a refresher course in cross-examination? No thanks, buddy! No need for help here, sir! I think I've got this one covered! I think you get better to pull the thing. You know it's for you no, or you not. I'm fine! The cords of steel are ready for battle! My weapons? Press and present! Find any inconsistencies, any lies in the testimony and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it, know it, do it. Inconsistencies? Lies? Phoenix Wright? As if Phoenix Wright would never lie! It's up to me to prove it! The defense may begin the cross-examination! I'm hoping that my voice is not too loud for you guys at times. I'm sorry. I like see the little voice thing go like shooting all the way up and I can't tell if that means, oh, am I being too loud or is it just catching way too much of my voice? Because the microphone is already like, it's literally about two feet away from me. So I don't know what else to do without uh, completely destroying any audio that you guys can hear of me. Okay, but so we're going to press on like all of this because god if we don't press on this we don't know anything it! they pay you just to play poker that would seem to be the case i am a professional after all bah! do i just have pride in that statement it's just hard for an honest hard-working member of society like me to imagine yes your imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. <laughs> what? I've played poker for seven years in that little room. And I've never lost. Once. What? You see why the customers come now. Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a draw. Oh! Phoenix! Wait, you've never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once? Is that even possible? The room where we play is... No, no, I already know that. We gotta press it, so... Okay, so apparently... It okay. wants me to actually say something. Crime scene photo is an attraction. It has quite a history, actually. The Borsch Bull Club used to be a gathering spot for the black market types back in the day. A black market? All in the past. Things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice to say that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there, in that room. A smoky room? Gambling hoods? You know? Looking at this picture makes me feel bad. The bosses gather around the table, cutting the deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps watch through the small window. I can practically picture it now. That window does like it look like it would be a good, good for keeping a lookout, but little else. The room had a few other tricks to it, though it was common knowledge to a regular. At any rate, they come to play poker in the room seeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. Rules are simple, gotta press on that. Two decks of cards? A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. There's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on the floor. Precisely, cards on the table, cards upon the floor, each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue. 
by a sad, by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Incidentally, we use two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards is red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker, you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. <laughs> yes, a game of hands. Da da da, what? This competition you're talking about. I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. Th th that's right! That's right, buddy! We know it, we know it. We know that we know this, bro. It was a simple game after all. I, I don't think I should have said that. Damn it, Apollo! Are you sure? Uh, people are not murdered over simple games, Mr. Justice. Defendant! You were in the room the very moment the crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense! Damn it, Apollo! <laughs> I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair, yes, Justice. Sir? Right. There's something I'd like made clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand. And I'd like to hear it from you. Da da da. Sure, why not? Very well. The defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press. And I've gotten myself a whole new testimony. Damn it, Apollo. I played silent in regards to murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. Damn it, Phoenix! Don't lie to me! So, you say you didn't touch the murder weapon? This grape juice bottle? Right? So I said? Ah! Something the matter, Mr. Justice? <laughs> Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb! What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see! And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints! <laughs> God damn it, Apollo! Objection! No need to shout, Mr. Justice! I can hear you just fine! <laughs> Fail, Justice! Fail. Justice is on a fail rolled. Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears and our case. But, but, but what about my cords of steel? And anyway, what's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? That that is a very good question. One could think that Mr. Wright has probably handled every single bottle in that restaurant, even if this one happened to be a murder weapon, which is really really bad. Well, that's true, the prince of oh, the- Oh, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on this murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted. And there can be only one reason for that. There could still be other reasons, Mr. Payne. Yes! To brain someone with the bottle! His voice is really painful. <laughs> ah! Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh, I see no problem, Justice. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There's a good reason for everything you see. Defendant! Can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? Da da da. I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Hmm. Not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Objection! Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime, who was it who reported the murder to the police? 
Reported? Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright, but still that. I'm sorry, nobody reports a murder that they themselves committed. You don't do that. Really? Er, yes, well, uh, according to the case file. The murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at a diagram of the murder scene, shall we? The victim was murdered in a small room in the basement, two floors down from ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I see. And this is the phone that made the call? Right cell phone address to the court record. Other submitted evidence during the trial. Thank you. The defendant could have just fled the scene of the crime if he so chose. Yet, he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative? Ha 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 ha! Oh, he's still being uncooperative. Urgh! Nice save, Mr. Gavin. I'd better not waste this. No, you freaking better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. Toyed? I assure you, no one is more serious about... What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment the cr that the crime occurred? How can you possibly know this? That's a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a decisive witness. <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. So someone else was in the room the night of the crime. Which means, they are most likely our murder sus- Murderer. Not really, but hey, we gotta roll with the punches here. That must mean that they witnessed the crime. Everything up till now has been a warm-up, Justice. Are you ready? No, no, I'm not ready, but hey, we are got- We got this! We got this! We got this together! Someone tell me if they can figure out where the hell that was from. <laughs> Very well. The prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. The witness will state her name and profession. But hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic-looking horns. Oh, heck off, you hacker. So I use a little hair gel. Relax, people. Have no fear! If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off! This court will always cut them off because God, we can't apparently. Da da da! You are sure? I swear on my gavel! Please come out! Isn't violence against hair a crime, Your Honor? Well, if you're sure it is okay. I'm probably giving her a very horrible accent I'm sorry, I'm not good to the Russian. Maybe that's the accent I should be the Russian. I'll try. <clears throat> no, the prosecution- Ah! Wait, wait, wait a minute! Would the prosecution care to explain the witness's um, paraphernalia? Er, um, yes. She is a professional, Your Honor. Those are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be? Olga, is Olga Oli. I am employed as a waitress at Bush Bowl Club restaurant. Then, why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve Bush at the naming restaurant. But I also perform, how is it said, author service? I take it one of those other services is taking the customer's pictures. Like, for example, this one. Th th that's the defendant. Indeed. On the night of the murder. Man in white hat is the one who is con kaput. Indeed. That is the victim. <laughs> 
Order! Order! This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop in our laps. It's the same way that I drop full balls of Porsche. Oh, 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 hold on. Ah. Sorry about that, guys. Cable was a little loose and it disconnected for a second. It's the same way that I drop cold bulls of bush on laps of customers casually. Mm. Then the court will casually accept this new evidence. Olga's photo added to the court record. Yay! Now, witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in a room. The hideout, we call it. The hideout, we call it. Excuse me? The hideout? Get this room with famous gangster bad guy. But <laughs> oh, it's a journey. I love your puns. Who's arrested? Who's arrested? This room where murder took place. What? You look at the supplies. It is lovely. I will post my courtroom door later for you. Da, da, photos will be numbered and you will write down which ones you want a copy of. So, there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shoddy Smith, Mr. Wright, and... Olga Orly. Our witness. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means, ah, oh, lady, you... You're the number one suspect on this list! Very well, witness! You will testify to the court about that night's events! Yes, testify, please! That fateful night. That night, customer asked me to deal cards for game. I was called, both players with hats, da? The victim, he plays all time with his hands. Unlock it at his neck. Then, last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, ah? Huh? That man flew his victim, strangling him to death. I excuse me, strangling? Strangling? Oh, oh, I, I need to hear this. Strangling when someone got bludgeoned. Incidentally, who won the game? Isn't it obvious? The winner was the victim, Mr. Smith. Objection! Oh, oh, that's ridiculous. Um, because Mr. Wright is undefeated. Obviously, that's why it's ridiculous. Because Mr. Wright can't lose. Uh, um, justice. Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection? But he hasn't lost in seven years. Take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose a case my first seven years as a prosecutor. I much doubt that, you loser. Von Karma and Miles are the only ones who had that kind of... Like, like, Von Karma, those kind of people, those are the only ones that really had that kind of, uh... Lead up to the end of their career of not losing? Incidentally, I have some evidence here. I'm sorry, that's two, three, that's a three of a kind and a pair of aces. Heck off on that! That's a five! That ain't a win or lose! These are the poker chips as they lay at the very moment of the crime! The hand with the chips on this side belongs to the defendant, Mr. Wright! Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith! Chips? You say? Yeah, I mean, yes! I imagine that poker is one! Your hand is your army and the chips are the spoils! I know that. After all, in my youth I was known as the poker head of courtroom number three. I think he means poker face? I think he means poker face. Hmm. Looking at this picture, it does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. Ah, 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 you gotta know the amount of those chips, buddy. You can't claim that if they, you don't know the chip amounts. God! Chip photo added to the court record. Very well. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Oh, witness, you're not gonna like my cross-examination. Yeah, 
Come on. I need to get to this part. Yeah. Lady! Try and be better <laughs> about your... Be better about your claiming. Oh, really? Strangled, you say? That's odd. The normal customers only joke on Bush. No, I mean, the report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head. Ack! Miss Orly, really now? Did you witness the crime? <laughs> hmm. Looking at the picture, it does seem like he was hit. The autopsy says he was hit. Obviously, Judge, I ain't making lies here, buddy. He is still wearing his hat and everything. Yet it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. Oh, look at that. No necklace either. Oh, the locket's gone too, loser. Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that's quite shocking, isn't it? This head certainly was hit. Crime photo number two added to the court record. But, but, but I, have, I have seen it happen. The defendant, he lunged at the victim his neck. Oh, really, Miss Orly? I think I've caught you in your own lie this time. Justice, I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think this through once more. W what do you mean? I found a contradiction. There's one thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue the cross-examination. There's such things as thinking too much. This horse is dead. Let's stop beating it. Oh, justice. The horse ain't dead yet. We can still beat it. There's such a thing as thinking aloud too much, too. I'm sorry, Gavin! That night, blah, 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 again. Victim, he plays full time with his hands on locket on his neck. I'm sorry. What locket? What locket? Objection! What locket, lady? You know, there was one curious part of her testimony, just like Mr. Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what it is you're thinking so intensely about? Recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on locket at his neck. Uh, that, that sounds weird, but I'm also saying that she's acting like she's foreign right now. I believe she said. I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. Oh! No, but uh, look at this paragraph. Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. I knew you'd be able to handle this. But, but what does it mean? Are we to believe that this witness testimony as is? Then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, then someone must have taken it off, no? Taken it off? Wait, you don't mean... The defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Ah! <laughs> so that someone didn't see the crime. Defendant! What is it you have to say to this? Dot, dot, dot. Say. Yes? I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? Oh! You mean this? Yes, it's a locket with a photograph inside. A photo of my daughter. Owned! C come again? Mr. Wright, you have a daughter? We confirmed it at the time of the arrest. The picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. Da da dot! Da da dot! So Mr. Wright has a locket too? Why don't I buy that this is just a coincidence? I don't buy that it's a coincidence either, Justice. Well now, if the results of this poker game led to the murder, perhaps we should hear a bit more about the outcome of the game. For 
Further testimony won't really be necessary. Oh, I call BS on you! It's clear the defendant lost. Badly. Miss Orley, you will testify to the court about the game played between the victim and the defendant. The? Lady, I'm about to catch you up in some lies here. Serious competition. The game begins with 3,500 points in chips for each man. House chips come in two sides, small and large. The one who is winning, da, he was victim. No, I wasn't. Put it, put it away, buddy. For last time, the defendant played with all the chips on the table and lose. The moment the boss was declared, the defendant grabbed his bottle from the table and... Indeed, looking at this picture, it does seem to be a one-sided game. As the court knows, poker was the defendant's life. Hmm. <laughs> Mister, I didn't know this before the case came into being. Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Ah, oh, how many times have I heard these words? i done it in a fit of rage, Your Honor. And now I regret what I've done. A common tale, but true. Methinks the judge watches too many old court movies. Mr. Wright said he hasn't lost in seven years, so this testimony must be wrong. Obviously it's wrong. Apollo? It's from this old crazy lady. Obviously she don't know what the hell she's talking about. Oh, uh, but we gotta press on those house chips. Gotta press hard on those house chips, cause God, nobody wants to tell me about the house chips. Hold it! Give me more information here. Are the chips in this photo all the chips that were used? Da, da, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something's fishy with these chips. Should I press harder? No shit, we press harder. God darn it, Apollo. Let's do it. Maybe you could explain a bit about these chips. What does let me be explained? Okay. Excuse you, there's a lot to be explained. Poker chips are poker chips. They're not fishing chips, not a chip off the old block, not a motorcycle cop, and thanks. Now that I've pressed her, I better ask them. What are these chips for? Are they dollars, rubies even? Yeah. As I've been saying before, or perhaps for capitalists to understand. Two types of chips. 100 point chips and 1000 point chips. It is not money, da. Justice. Sir! Don't you find her comment interesting? In more ways than one, sir. I'd have it, add I'd have it added to her testimony myself. Well, does the defense want the witness to add to her testimony? Oh shit, Sherlock, we added this to the testimony! Yes! I do think this deserves further scrutiny. Yeah, lady, further scrutiny. Add it to the testimony. I wish I knew where I was going with this. We all wish you knew where you were going with this. Very well, witness. You would be so kind. The thought, you don't know. One kind of chip worth a hundred, other kind of worth a thousand. Ha <laughs> ha You're sure it was the victim who won? Absolutely sure! <laughs> oh, heck off! It seems our new attorney is a bit confused. A glance at this picture is enough to tell you who won if you're not in kindergarten. No, it's not! Heck the heck off, buddy! Um, just for safety's sake, could you explain the problem to the court? Of course, Your Honor. In this photo, I see small chips and I see large chips. Tell me, which were worth a thousand points? Why, the big ones, of course. Duh. Oh, I thought so too. But then the totals don't add up. The totals? Let's review what the witness told us. Each man 
started with 3,500 points in chips. And the combined total value of the chips was 7,000 points. Yes? If my calculations are correct, let's see 3 plus 1 carry the 5. Um, they are, Your Honor. Now, look at this photo that allegedly shows all the chips. If the big chips are worth a thousand, then the small chips are worth a hundred. And you add them up. How much is it? Do it yourself. You aren't in kindergarten, are you? 10,600 points. The chips don't add up. This clearly contradicts the witness's testimony. Yep, buddy. Your testimony full of holes. But, but why? How could this be? Oh, how could this be? Exactly, Justice. Now that you know the what, you must determine the why. Right. There's only one possible way to explain this contradiction. Both were wrong. Each man began the game at 3,500 points. If all the chips are indeed shown in this photograph, then there can only be one answer. Well, what is it? The value of the chips was the other way around. What? Wanna know what I think? The small chips were worth a thousand, not the big ones! Madness! Utter madness! Show me that photograph of chips again! There are six small chips and ten large chips. Why, that does make the seven thousand points when you add them up. Boom! Buddy, boom! Excellent work, Justice. It's almost as though you figured it out by yourself. Oh, heck off, Kristoff! Well, I'm just glad I was the one who said it. Oh, I'm just glad I was the one who said it, darn it. But wait! The value of the chips may be different, but that changes nothing! Indeed! The victim did have the larger number of chips still. Excuse you, it changes everything, buddy. Oh! Exactly. If the small chips are a thousand points and the large chips are a hundred... Let's do a little math. Out of the points for each side of the table. Ah! Ah! The victim, Mr. Smith, had 2,900 points, and the defendant had 4,100 points! Well now, it seems that Mr. Wright was winning the night after all. That's impossible! My client had even less of a reason to kill the victim. After all, he was winning! Now, Mr. O Miss Orley, you must have known the true value of the chips, since you were there at the scene of the crime, weren't you? Uh, yeah. Order! Order! It appears our defendant has lost his motive, and Mr. Wright's supposed defeat never happened! We must now ask ourselves whether we could... Uh, okay, who said hold it? Who in the world said hold it? Excuse me, what is it, Miss Orly? I... I did not want to be saying this, but... Actually, you see... Uh... Say what, Miss Orly? What do we see? In last time, there was cheat. A cheat? Y you don't mean... A trick? Wait, or do you mean a scam? They're all the same thing. Yes, there was cheat in last time. That is why game ends with chips as they are. Great, just great. First we have lying, now cheating. Well, this case has certainly taken a turn for the interesting. Witness! You will please testify to the court! Tell us about this cheating in the final hand! Yeah, tell me about this cheating in the final hand! I want to hear all about this lovely cheating! The last time, both men had full house. There was four of each card in deck. Is to give. If you look at the both man's hands, cheat is more obvious. The next moment, the game becomes 
small demon Da defended trick was exposed. He took photo in hand for Mr. Smith. Miss Orley! Why didn't you tell the court about this from the very beginning? Da, da, da. I thought I smelled a cover up here. Well, folks, it's time to throw back the covers. Hmm. A full house is a very high scoring hunt. Not easy to make in my experience. That alone is enough to suspect less than scrumptious tactics. Um, Mr. Gavin, what's a full house? Lawyers these days. You don't know your poker? Why would I know gambling when it's outlawed, buddy? I can't say this bodes well for your case. Or your career. Oh, shut up. What is this? Some kind of secret poker ring? Court poker ring? Court poker ring. Justice. You know that the terms one pair, two pair, and three of a kind, yes? Uh, yeah, no problem. Two cards with the same number make a pair and three makes a three of a kind. Good. Now picture a hand with one pair and one three of a kind. That's a full house. Hmm. That doesn't sound easy to make, does it? You can see each player's hand in this photo. Wow, they both have full houses. may cross-examine the witness. If he did cheat in the last hand, that leaves one important question. Mr. Wright lost that hand. Whoever heard of a professional con man losing when they cheat? Final hand. Oh, lady, I'm gonna, I'm gonna destroy you over that. I'm gonna destroy you so bad, lady. Oh. Was it clear? The, the, the defendant. He play a fifth ace. A fifth ace? I still remember both hands very well. Mr. Smith hand has three aces. And Mr. Wright's two. Obviously, cheating was afoot. Or perhaps I should say, a hanging. This could be added to the testimony without Mr. Payne's joke. Very well. The witness will add this detail to her testimony, please. Yeah, I want that to the testimony. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, lady. You lie into my face. Objection! It appears the witness is mistaken. M mistaken? But my name... Look, this piece of evidence clearly contradicts what you said in your testimony. That's the photo of the chips, is it not? Justice, perhaps you ought to explain your point in a way the judge can comprehend? In other words, use your finger to point out the, your point. Because someone is that dumb. That dumb I gotta point out. Yes, please point out the contradiction in this photo. Okay, I'll point it out. In your testimony, you made the following claim. Mr. Smith's hand had three aces. But as you can clearly see, the victim's hand only held two aces. Eek! Well, maybe the witness was simply confused. Perhaps it was the defendant's hand that held the third ace in question. No, no, no. 
take another look at the evidence. As you can see, the defendant also had two aces in his hand. Where's this fifth ace? I see cheating already, and it's going on right here in this courtroom! Oh! Oh! I owned you! I owned you! Two aces in each player's hand does make four aces total! Hardly proof of cheating! Wait, please! It is true! I have seen it! The fifth ace! There was cheating, I swear to you! That's odd. She must be lying, yet she's the most sincere I've seen her all day. You're right to trust your instincts, Mr. Gavin. Who knows what lies in store for us in the trial ahead? Your Honor, if I may, I have a suggestion. What might that be, Mr. Gavin? If you don't mind, perhaps we might examine the actual cards? Cards? Mr. Pay. Uh, yes? The player's hands that night were set aside as evidence, were they not? The defense would like to request that the cards be shown to the court. I would love to request that. Very well. The prosecution will submit this evidence. Which will you examine? The victim's cards or the defendant's cards? I, I think you want to really see uh, the victim's hand. Like, God. That's the one that we're having a contradiction with. If these cards don't prove cheating was going on, nothing will. Now, which of these hands is more suspicious? Obviously, the victim's hands. It was the victim's hand that changed over the course of the witness's testimony. Yep. Yes, it did. It changed all right. The defense requests to examine Mr. Smith's cards. Very well, Mr. Payne, if you would. Very well. Received evidence, victim's hand. Well, time's a-wasting. Get to it, Justice. Y yes, sir. better perspective on the case. Okay, let's do this. The card backs are red. For some reason, I thought they were using blue cards, that final hand. Didn't you, Mr. Gavin? Hmm? Oh, um, which was it now? You're the one who made me think blue, you lying chuckle fa chuckle hecker. Look at this! One of the victim's cards! The back is a different color! Eh? Eh? That's impossible! But I put that card in Mr. Rock! Oh, you lying heck of a liar! What was that, Miss Orley? Oh, yes! Yeah. I nearly said it that I have eek! Your Honor! Mr. Gavin, yes? way to cheat at poker. To cheat? I'll tell you. What nearly needs a friend, a comrade, shall we say. The dealer. Ah! Ah! Wait, so you mean? This witness, Miss Orley. She's the cheater, a professional. to take advantage of her. I mean, of her mistake. I, I obviously mean her mistake. I, don't, I didn't mean that in any other way. Justice, be quiet. Your Honor, please recall the testimony we just heard. Th that's impossible. But I put that card on right hand. Ergo, Miss or Olga Orly conspired to cheat, not with my client. Who with the victim, Mr. Shady Smith? Orc! Not only did she cheat, she cheated poorly. Therefore, it's not hard to imagine an altercation between her and the victim. What? Wait, you don't mean? The defense isn't accusing the witness, Miss Olga Orley, are you? 
she's all I got, buddy. She's all I have at the moment in that room that I can accuse. Time for justice. There were three people in that room at the time of the incident. And if Mr. Wright isn't guilty, that means I am. The defense accuses the witness, Ms. Olga Orly, of murder. Eek! And she faints. I still love that animation. It is fun. Mr. Bray, where is your witness, Miss Olga And it appears she has lost her consciousness, Your Honor. Mr. Justice, Your Honor, it seems you present a new possibility to the court. One suggesting a connection between the witness and the victim, Mr. Smith. And that means... This court cannot pronounce a verdict for the defendant at this time. Nick, what? I did it! I held out! I see no point in prolonging the trial this day. The prosecution will need to make further inquiries. Objection! Ooh, Mr. Wright, what the hell? What the hell, Mr. Wright? Mr. Wright? You can't end the trial here, Your Honor. Not yet. What nonsense is the defendant spewing now? Think, one of the cards had a different colored back. Don't you wonder what that means? you doing, Mr. Wright? Raising objections right when you're about to get off the hook? Ridiculous! Mr. Payne, you of all people should know. Mr. Wright has a talent. For the ridiculous! Uh, that's not how I would have described that, but okay, buddy. Okay, judgy pal. Perhaps we should get to the bottom of things. Let's clear up the facts about that game that fateful night. As was said before, we alternated between two decks of cards that night. That was said before! The two decks of the club have different colored backs. Blue and red. One color per deck. Why use different colored backs? still got mixed. We used the red deck for the last game. Hmm, I see. But that's odd. For some reason, I have the impression that you were using blue cards. Yeah, me too. Oh, shock of all sharks, who put that thought in my brain? Huh? Huh? Who put that thought in my brain? I'm sure someone said something about blue cards. Part of the red color got into the mix, which means there was cheating. Yes, a card slipped into the deck would indicate cheating. Yet this card raises two serious questions. Apollo. Yes. Yes. What the hell do you want from me, Mr. Wright? Let's consider the first question, shall we? Okay. I'll consider any questions you really want me to. Last game, when was the card swapped? When? There are three broad possibilities here. It could have been swapped before the murder, during the murder, or after the murder. Well, yeah! Thanks for the news bulletin, Mr. Wright! Of course it was swapped! Oh? It might be as simple as you think, Mr. Payne. Or it might not! Yuck! I'd like to hear what Apollo thinks first. Obviously, you gotta know what I think. I'm the best at defense attorney here. Hey! When do you think the cards were swapped? When was the card swapped into the deck? After, after, it's utterly. 
after. Perhaps it happened after the murder? Oh, heck off! What's that? Ridiculous! What's the point of cheating after the hands have been chewed? That's silly! Objection! Yes, but tell me! How do you swap cards during the game? I take silly over impossible! Are a different color? If you pulled that during the game, you'd be caught in no time. Ugh! Quite true. That would mean that the blue card in question was swapped after the hands were shown. After the murder. Oh, hack off, Mr. Payne! Okay, this is going past silly and straight into crazy! I ask again, what's the point of cheating after the game's over? Who would do that? That's one of the mysteries before us. There's another? Yes, a simple and decisive question must be asked. Who swapped the red card for a blue card? Wh who? The king, the murderer, is done. The victim is dead. Only two remain in the room, alive that is. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and our witness, Old Orly. Okay. So who was it that swapped the red card for a blue card? Someone else! Bum bum bum! The one who swapped the cards was a Mr. Right, of course. And well, it doesn't seem like it could have been Miss Old Orly either! What are you suggesting? That's hardly a logical conclusion, I'll admit. As the defense, I think it only makes sense for you to name Miss Orly at this point. Yes, yes, I know. But she was the one who dealt the cards, right? I I just can't believe she would make the mistake of swapping the wrong color card. And if the card was swapped during the game, it'd be obvious. <laughs> Something you'd like to share with the court, Mr. Wright? Oh, my apologies, Your Honor. I was just thinking how much fun all this is. Fun? How about confusing? I have no idea what the defense is claiming, Your Honor! If the one who swapped the cards wasn't the defendant, and it wasn't Miss Horley, then who was it? Er, yeah, well, that's the question, isn't it? That's the question of the day, Mr. Payne! Precisely. I believe we're about to see this case take a new direction. A new direction? We'll find that, indeed, after the murder. Someone swapped one of the cards in the victim's hand. And that someone made two critical mistakes. I'm sure you're going to tell us that the first was swapping the wrong color, color card. Because the one who did swap didn't know two colors of cards were being used. The other mistake was the number on the card. Right. The person replaced the fifth ace with a king. I'm sure whoever swapped it wasn't expecting there to be a fifth ace after all. All they knew was the game had been won with a full house. So they picked up the king from the table and swapped it in. But th there's still one problem! According to our case record, this person doesn't exist! True, not until now. But you have to admit the possibility of a fourth person Though it's more than a possibility. There was someone else there that night at the scene of the crime. What? I believe the judge spoke truthfully earlier. You do make trials ridiculous, Mr. Wright. This trial has proceeded on one central assumption. Namely, that at the time of the incident, there were only three people in that room. I believe this new evidence, shall we say, overturned that assumption. The problem is that you chose to conceal this information from the courts! I suppose that is a problem, yes. Court is adjourned for a brief recess! Mr. Gavin, I'll see you in my chambers during this recess. Certainly, you are. Very well, the 
trial will resume in 20 minutes. April 20th, 11.52 a.m. That took an hour and 52 minutes in their world to get through all that. District Court Defendant Lobby Number 3. That was quite unexpected, Mr. Wright. To suddenly claim there was another person at the scene of the crime like that. I must ask, is, is it the truth? Well now, I think you would know the answer to that. Bum bum bum! to your defense in the future. Otherwise, I cannot guarantee the outcome. I see you haven't mellowed out one bit, Kristoff. Justice? Y yes, sir? The judge has summoned me to his chambers. So carry on without me. You did well, Apollo. Um, can I ask you something? Sure. That locket you wear. Is that really yours, Mr. Wright? Ah, you're wondering about the victim's disappearing locket. Here, you can take a look at it. That's a picture of my daughter in there. So what was the victim doing with a picture of your daughter? I'm terrified of that. That idea right there is a scary assumption. I'm just surprised to hear you had a daughter. Most people are. Perhaps you'll meet her one of these days. One more question. The one who cheated that night, was it you? Da 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 hot. What do you think? Huh? You know what happened seven years ago. What I did? It's not unreasonable for you to think I might cheat. I ain't never honest, but it is odd that he managed to go undefeated for seven years. Wanna know something? There's only one game where you can be dealt a bad cards all night and still win. Poker. Eh? You see, poker is all about reading your opponents. In that way, it's a lot like a court case. Poker is like trial law? What? Figure it out what your opponent is thinking and you win. Well, yeah, but that's harder than it sounds. I think not. Huh? Try as they might to conceal it, everyone reveals their true thoughts in the end. Their body language can become a valuable source of information. You're kidding. That witness, for instance, Miss Orly? She would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. Did you notice? Uh, no. Come on, who noticed that? Words, habits, twitches, it's all information for the reading. That's the secret to winning, Apollo. That secret on to you. But I'm not worthy. I mean, there's no way I'll pick up on these signals. No, you can do it. Huh? You just don't know it yet. What's he talking about? But you will. Soon. Ah, almost forgot. One more thing. About this case. You should know, I haven't told the truth to anyone yet. What? I knew it! You! I have my reasons, of course. All shall be revealed. And Apollo, I need you to be there, defending me. I need your power. My, um, power? I had no idea my cords of steel were that special. It's time. The real trial begins now. Do your best. Bum, 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 bum. To be continued, guys! Oh, and that's where we're going to end this. Oh, thank you guys so much for joining me as we play Apollo Justice on the 3DS. Obviously, I'm trying to get back in the flow of uh, recording video games and video game footage. Uh... I thought I'd do the live streams, and then that didn't turn out to work the greatest. The trip to Japan has definitely screwed a lot of stuff up. June was just a horrible month in general, and now we're here. Doing Apollo Justice, the game I said I would do when it came out, and I didn't do it. Uh, and then 
we are going to try to get into Ace Attorney. Hopefully, I will get that on tomorrow. I will get that downloaded on my Switch, and I will start recording episodes. I'm going to try my best to get an episode out a week of each series. Trying to get at least an Apollo Justice and an Ace Attorney done every day. And then obviously I do want to get back, do another live stream of Spirit of Justice, try and get Spirit of Justice done. Um, the biggest thing here is you guys. Obviously, audio quality, sound quality, that is something that I have no knowledge or experience of how this all sounds to you. So your guys' feedback is extremely helpful. Um... And it does help me understand if the system is working right. Like, right now, it looks like my voice is, uh, not picking up nearly as nicely. But it could be picking up very nicely because there's no background sound at the moment. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I will have this and the next episode should be out at the same time. Because I'm trying to release, at least for this first, for the first case of every game, I'm going to try to get them all out as uh, one solid entry, even if they're split into two parts. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining me, and I will catch you all on the flip side. Bye, everyone.